Mrs. McLaughlin. Mary Ellen Principe. Dr. O'Leary. Scott Lazo. Mrs. Principe. Principe. Mrs. Woodruff. Principe. Dr. Domenko. Two for Lazo, four for Principe. So our new vice chair will be uh, Mrs. Principe. All right, number three, election officer for the secretary, our recording secretary. Do I have any nominations? Mrs. Principe? I nominate um, Eric Ely for secretary. Second? Do we have a second for Eric, Mr. Ely? I second Mr. Ely. Thank you. Any other nominations? Any other nominations? Point of clarification. The official secretary of the board is, is, is the person who's responsible for the minutes that come to you. So the process in Southbridge has been the superintendent gets from the recording secretary a draft of the minutes and reviews those minutes before they're approved to go to the school committee for a final okay. approval. Uh, Mr. Gullickson has traditionally been the, the recording secretary. Okay, thank you. Uh, yes, Dr. I'd like O'Leary. To nominate Mr. Gullickson, please. That's for the next one, sorry, the recording okay, secretary. I'm sorry, okay. the secretary first, then recording secretary. So. Yeah, Eric, didn't you say that the, the, the official secretary does it? The official secretary okay. is generally the. Thank you. Okay, roll we'll call vote for secretary. Uh, Mrs. McLaughlin. Mr. Ely. Dr. O'Leary. Mr. Ely. Mrs. Principe. Ely. Mrs. Woodruff. Mr. Ely. Dr. Domenko. Mrs. Donovan? Mr. Ely. Six for Mr. Ely. Thank you. Uh, next, we will um, elect for the Officer of Recording Secretary. Is there any nominations for Recording Secretary? Dr. Domenko? I'd like to nominate for Carolyn Max Second. We have a, a nomination and a second out there. Is there any other nominations? Any other nominations? We have a roll call, please. Dr. O'Leary? Yeah, Max. Mrs. Principe? Max. Mrs. Woodruff? Max. Dr. Domenko? Max. Mrs. Donovan? Max. Mrs. McLaughlin? Max. Six for Max. <laughs> Congratulations, Max. And same to you, Mr. <laughs> All righty, for um, number C, day and time of regular meetings. Um, is there a, nom a motion for day of regular school committee meeting, Mrs. Principe? I make a motion that the day of the regular school committee meeting is a Tuesday. Second. Thank you. We have a um, motion and a second for Tuesdays for the regular school committee meeting. Roll call, please. Uh, Mrs. Principe? Yes, Tuesday. Mrs. Woodruff? Tuesday, yes. Dr. Domenko? Tuesday. Mrs. Donovan? Tuesday. Mrs. McLaughlin? Tuesday. Dr. O'Leary? Tuesday. Six for Tuesday. Thank you. Under item two is the time of commencement. Let me make a motion. Motion for seven. Time. Motion seven o'clock. Second. Okay, we have a motion for seven o'clock from Dr. O'Leary, seconded by Mary Ellen. Seven PM. Seven PM, not AM. Yes. <laughs> seven PM. Sure. Roll call, please. Mrs. Woodruff? Seven PM. <clears throat> Dr. Domenko? 7 p.m. Mrs. Donovan? 7 p.m. Mrs. McLaughlin? 7 p.m. Dr. O'Leary? 7 p.m. Mrs. Principe? 7 p.m. 6 for 7 p.m. Thank you. Um, next on the agenda are subcommittees. Um, we have four subcommittees. Um, is there any... I'm sorry, I'm new at this. I, I would just ask, uh, does anybody have any motion as to maintaining these or altering okay. the structure of this. I, that's the only thing I can think of. All right, so do well, we have can a... I, can I interrupt for one minute, Eric? There will, be, there will be some altering regardless because the members on the, the new members, right? But it's not, it's not the membership. It's actually whether or not you're going to have the standing committee. Gotcha. We're not, you're not voting on membership. 10 for Yep. Thank you. Um, if I could just ask this question, maybe either Madam Chair or perhaps the Chairman of the ex these existing um, subcommittees to just give us an overview, perhaps, of what each one of these actually are and what their functions are so that 
Um, I myself and perhaps Mrs. McLaughlin could have a better idea of what each of these subcommittees does and to determine whether or not other or existing members feel that these are worthwhile policies that we should keep in place for the upcoming year. Okay, sure. Um, right now we have four subcommittees. We have policy subcommittee, which basically any of the policies um, need to be updated or changed through state recommendation or whatever that policy, um, that subcommittee will have members who will decide on the policy. Actually, they talk about the policy and then they bring it to us as a whole, committee as a whole, to vote it in as a new policy. Can I, uh, Madam Chair, mm -hmm. as an example, would the bullying be a recent example of Correct. what happens at policy? Correct, the bullying okay. policy would thank be an you. example. Okay, thank you. Um, on the collective bargaining, that basically is where negotiations take place for contracts. So that is all included on collective bargaining at this time. We also have budget facilities and transportation, and that's basically budget, uh, all the budget information on that. And then curriculum, of course, is um, when the curriculum is going to change. We have a subcommittee for curriculum, and they discuss it. And all these subcommittees bring everything to the committee of the whole for a vote. Okay. Thank Madam you. Madam Chair. Yes. I don't know um, if this is appropriate. I'd like to propose a new subcommittee to the school committee, that of communication, family and community engagement, to be a permanent subcommittee of okay. the school committee. All right. Um, Mrs. Principal, if you, could help, if you could help me out here for a while. I, I would second that. And okay. Then discussion. Okay, so we have a motion and a, and a second to discuss a uh, subcommittee. Um, do we have a discussion? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Dr. Um, Ms. Goffin, could you help me out with what, what, might, what might you find as okay. important as components of that? I know that the name sort of gives an indication, but if you could sure. help me out with what you're thinking. Um, I think one of the longstanding challenges in this district, um, according to the May 2010 Level 4 District Review, and it continues to be an issue today, is communication and family and community engagement, drawing more people in, um, allowing more people to have a say or to have input as to um, what's happening in the district and uh, to improve overall relations with um, students, parents, teachers, anybody from the community, business members who might want to be invi invited and participate. I yes. didn't, would you be interested, would you be open to um, perhaps bringing in other civic organizations as well? Absolutely. Uh, you know, or other Absolutely. organizations that are out there? Any, Mrs. Prince Bay? I actually think that, that, that this is a, is a very good um, uh, subcommittee to have, whether we call it community outreach or whatever anybody wants to call it. And I, I think we've all sat up here and we've even said ourselves that communication has been an issue. And Lauren, I know you've been up at the podium several times about communication, and we've all agreed. So I, I for one, think that this is a very good idea that we have this and I don't know how, you know, who wants to head it up and exactly what's involved, but there could even be ad hoc committees that are spawned from, from that one committee if there's certain tasks to be, you know, undertaken. So I'm in favor of that. Dr. Um, Domenico? Oh, I'm sorry, are you finished, Ms. Principal? No, I, just, I didn't know if we were going to vote these individually because I have things to say about some of the others also, so, but I yield to okay, Tanya. Okay, Dr. Domenico. Uh, thank you. Uh, Madam Chair, is there a precedent for having outside members on any of the school committees, subcommittees? I don't, I don't see why they couldn't be. I'm not sure what the, I know the town council does and has outside members, so I I'm don't I'm asking see. for the school committee. I don't ever remember anybody else. That's I've, why I'm yeah, asking is there a precedent All the times that this? I've been on it, I've never remembered anyone from Me the either. outside, all, even though they're welcome to come to all and, the meetings. But that is something we can look at also to have an outside member. And my, my second question is procedural. Do we need to vote the addition of this possible committee as an amendment to the, to the agenda item D first before it's included on the agenda? Um, I, the motion's out there, so I don't, know, I don't believe, I don't know that it has to I be I don't know amendment. if it has to be amend, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it has to be an amendment be, well, these are, I, there's no harm in adding. Mm -hmm. Actually, I, I, I mean, in, in, just if I could add, I, I think, and I'm not, I'm not sure about this, and Terry might be able to help us under Robert's Rules of Order, because I know you're going to adopt those in a few minutes. 
but I believe this is the discussion around subcommittees. What subcommittees are you establishing? Mm -hmm. If you choose to establish it, it wasn't on the list because you don't have it right now, but I don't think you need an amendment. Mm -hmm. To me, it's just been moved. And once you have all the discussion around everything and you come up with the subcommittees you're going to have, whether it be three, four, five, six, whatever, then you vote the group as long as you agree. I guess you would probably vote them individually. Though. I, I would agree with Dr. Domenico. You probably need to vote them individually. Thank you. I think so. Mary Ellen. Yeah, yeah I, I think either way is, is good. I think the cleanest way may be to, if you have, for example, in this case, a new committee you're adding to the list, is to adopt it as part of this list. And then if there is other discussion that's going to happen with the other committees, to have that discussion so that if you're going to add, delete, or change one of the other committees, then do that and then adopt your final list. Be the cleanest way to do it from a parliamentary standpoint. Okay. Did you have anything, Dr. No, I just wanted to, I wanted to caution and make sure I am not, uh, Robert's Rules is not my forte, and I would uh, want us to make sure that we're dotting all the I's and crossing all the T's before you go ahead and do it. I've been on the other end of things when it wasn't done right, and you know, you got to backtrack, and if it's going to go forward, then I think we ought to make sure that we're doing it right. Don't just say, I think we can do this, I think we can do that. Let's make sure. If that's what you want to do, if that's what's voted, then let's make sure we do it as we, you know, by the letter. I, I don't know what the charter says, and I don't know what your policy says, so right. it might not be a bad idea to follow Dr. Uh, O'Leary's suggestion and, and formulate your list and... You know, it hasn't, and, it hasn't, and vote on it later. We haven't had a precedent yet. There's nothing wrong with uh, setting a precedent. I, I uh, there think, is a, you know, maybe we just go cautiously and. Go I, think, I, I think Dr. Domenico's question is a good question yeah. to look at the policy as well, whether or not there can be, under the board policy or the, or the uh, the school committee policy or the town charter, whether or not there can be ex, uh, outside members of those subcommittees. I, I don't know the answer to that. Oh, excuse me. Um, I I think. Um, you know, my vision for this uh, committee, if you'll allow me that, would be that um, three school committee members serve on that committee, mm -hmm. that certain groups be invited to participate, but they can be non-voting members. I mean, we could, you could do it that way. Um, it's just to get more feedback from the community as to what they're looking for and how we can work together as a community mm -hmm. to improve the schools. That was the purpose behind it. Dr. Through the uh, chair, um, Ms. McLaughlin, so if you, just to make sure, you said certain entities or groups would be invited, but it's still open to everybody. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm that sorry, have yes. to be, okay, yeah, and. Yes. Um, be open to the public. Yeah, if, I appreciate that. Thank you for that clarification. The other one would be that I'm curious as to how the formation of the committee would have people all of a sudden um, invest their time and energy when up until now they haven't? Um, I think it's a new day, and I think okay. people will step forward. Okay. So it's faith in the right thing thing? It's <laughs> faith in the right thing. All right. Thank you. Mr. I'm a little lost right now. Where are we on the, you know, the community outreach subcommittee? Are we putting that this off? Is, this is we? what we're discussing, right? I thought we were just discussing that, right? There's a motion and a second. There's a motion and a second. Okay. And we are doing that tonight. Well, well there's a motion no, I think and we a just second. Okay. Whether it is, I have no problem with okay. that. All right. So if, if people were to agree then that we were going to wait until we can be deliberate of it as to just what, how things would happen, happen correctly, would it be better to postpone it, table it, amend it, uh, I'm not sure the right way to do it. it. It would seem to me like, if I can add, I, I would think you should, you, you've, you've got a motion on the floor, you may want to oh, table yeah. it, yeah. you've discussed it now, you may want to table it until we can look at the charter, right. and we can look at the school committee policy, because I don't know what the policy is on your subcommittees. It could actually be something you have to look at. Uh, I'm actually pulling up the policy now. Isn't technology wonderful? Isn't technology wonderful? Subcommittees of the school committee. Um, it's relatively short. Um, subcommittees may be created for the specific purpose for committee action. One, the subcommittee will be established through action of the committee. Two, subcommittee chair and members will be appointed by the committee chair, subject to approval by the committee. 
Three, the subcommittee may make recommendations for committee action. Four, the committee chairman and the superintendent will be ex officio members of all special subcommittees. Five, a subcommittee will be dissolved by the committee upon completion of its assignment, or it may be dissolved by a vote of the committee. Takes care of it. Yeah. Takes care so. of it. I think that's pretty clear. Don't you just have to, you have a motion on the floor? We have a motion on the second. floor, and we have a second. Any more discussion? Okay, then let's have a roll call vote on that. Dr. Domingo? Abstained. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? No vote, no. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Four yes, one no, one abstain. All right, then we have a new subcommittee, um, Community Outreach Subcommittee, I believe is what we're going to call that. Communications, Family, and Community Engagement. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, second. That's the way her motion read. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, now we have um, any discussion on the policy subcommittee? Anyone? Do we make a motion to keep the Make a motion to accept the policy as a subcommittee. Okay, I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Uh, any discussion? Any discussion on the motion and the second for policy? Okay, can we have a vote on that, please? Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodrow? Yes. Dr. Domingo? Yes. Six yes. All righty, our next one is collective bargaining. To have a motion to so accept collective bargaining. There's a motion from Dr. O'Leary in the second. Second from Dr. Domingo. Discussion? Mrs. Principe? Um, I've thought long and hard about this subcommittee, collective bargaining, and this is a subcommittee made up of school committee members that I don't agree that we should have. I would rather see a negotiating panel with a member of the school committee, but I would like that panel to be people who have expertise in negotiations. I know Mr. Wiggins comes to us with that experience. And I believe Mr. Ely also has that experience. I've sat as an alternate for a number of years on negotiations, and what I've found over the years, and I, this is, I'm not criticizing anybody who was ever on the committee or, or past chairs of the committee, but what I've found is quite a bit of um, misunderstanding, miscommunication, misconstruing of, of many things that have wound up for us to be, have grievances and arbitration in some cases arbitration and I would feel so much more secure if we had this negotiating panel and I would I feel that this panel should work with the school committee as a whole prior to opening negotiations with any collective bargaining unit to ask you know our input whether it's it's um, money increases percentages time more school days, less school days, whatever it happens to be, that this panel meets with the school committee prior, but that panel does the negotiations and reports back to the school committee as a whole throughout the entire progression. I think I would also like, in the case of negotiations with the Southbridge Education Association being a very large bargaining, collective bargaining unit, that we actually, actually hire a, one of our attorneys to do that collective bargaining. Um, and also certainly keep this school committee abreast throughout the entire process. 
and this is only my opinion, I, I feel very strongly about it because of, of what has happened in the past, whether we did not take the proper notes or recordings or whatever. Um, but that's how I feel about this, and I just thought I would share it with everybody. Thank you. Dr. Domenico? I, I think we are threading on very, very thin ice. One of the few responsibilities imposed onto the school committees is fiduciary obligation. Relinquishing our responsibility to manage collective bargaining is a very, very dangerous move, which really determines the school finances. I will not be supporting elimination of the collective bargaining committee. Uh, yes, ma'am, thank you. Uh, I agree, um, Ms. Domenico. Um, I would say that the negotiations committee, um, subcommittee over the past number of years has actually done uh, a really good job of holding uh, the, how much money is spent on negotiations and future contracts with teachers in times of uh, desperate financial Rates, I guess, uh, and we all are familiar with this recently. Um, it's not the Southbridge district that's laying off all sorts of teachers now and don't have the money from 2010 or 2011 because they spent it all the first year. It was, it was us at the school committee and it was us at the negotiations table that made sure that we held a hard line and, and made sure that we treated every entity, every, every bargaining uh, unit um, equally. I, I agree, Ms. Uh, Dr. Domingo, that to give up the right and the, the ability to negotiate um, would, I don't, I, I'm, I have fear just thinking of that. It, it really, that causes me anxiety to think that you want to give up the, one of the few really important rights um, that we have. Uh, we have a, 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 a tr an attorney that, that sits with us in the in negotiations whenever at our beck and call whenever we want to have that person here. So, to just have an attorney here, we go spending more money that we don't have. Have an attorney just go automatically take the power out of the, the hands of those people that uh, live here and work here and are uh, invested in this community and in this district. Uh, I, I think that's a misguided uh, and, and lack of insight on that that idea I will not be supporting that thank you any other discussions mrs. Prince yes and I, I'm, I'm not here debating and I think people are misunderstanding what I'm saying I am certainly not saying that we're neglecting our fiduciary duty or that we're giving up our power or our right and I was I thought it was very clear that this negotiating panel meet with the school committee so we make the decisions as far as, you know, whether it's a, whatever the increase is or not is, or 1% or 5% or whatever. Um, I in no way mean to give up any right that we have. I just thought things could go a lot more smoothly. I know it's costly to have an attorney. I would suggest an attorney for negotiating with the teachers' union. And I do that because I have been witness to what has happened and, the, and the, the lawsuits and the grievances and, and the arbitrations that cost for, far more than having an attorney sit during those negotiations. So I just wanted to make myself clear, but I'm, I'm done with that and I'm not debating it any further. Any other discussion? Um, I think I need some more clarification um, relative, relative to this subcommittee. How many people or how many sitting school committee members were are currently on the subcommittee or were on the subcommittee in the past? Like who else is there? I know, Mr. Lear, you talk as if you were there or were you um, were Myself, we I'm member? the most recent of the members. There's okay. three members. Okay. There's three members and there's an, altern uh, an alternate. An alternate? Okay. Oh, sorry. My... And if I may yes, add, Mrs. there's Prince. three members and an alternate. Um, the alternate does not vote if the three members are present. It is who runs the who runs the negotiation is the chairman of that subcommittee right. who is a school committee member, right. who will be a school committee member. Four school committee members there. Yeah. And then who else? Who else, what, is, who else is present? Uh, our attorney, if need be. Is uh, that Mrs. Rozak, just so that I'm, as I'm or familiar. any, it doesn't have to and necessarily be her, but somebody yeah, from that as firm. As I'm familiar, and then whatever bargaining unit um, happens to be before us at the time. 
and, and we, whatever representatives they have with them. And do we only engage in collective bargaining with the SEA, or are there other entities no, within the district? No, the, the, the paras, the, the nursing staff, the janitors. I don't mean to leave anybody out, but there's a, a, a number of bargaining units. Six, I believe. Yeah. Six. Okay, correct. Um, then my follow-up question, I guess, would be to Mr. Wiggin. Um, do you have any experience sitting on a panel such as this? I know that you've come I, with a lot of experience in many ways. Have you seen something like this before? I, I, have, a, I have experience in a variety of forms of, of uh, negotiations. Uh, again, as some of the members of the committee know, I'm, I'm Harvard trained in interspace negotiation. But yes, I'm involved in what is, I guess, sometimes called traditional or adversarial bargaining. Um, generally speaking, in more traditional forms of bargaining such as this, there is not a majority of the committee present at the table. Um, there usually is someone, usually a legal counsel, um, or a professional negotiator, not always a lawyer, um, who acts as the spokesman um, in the Concord School District, which was a somewhat unique school district. I actually was the chief negotiator um, for that particular district um, with all of the unions. Um, but I did have a lawyer present. Uh, it was a little. It was a little different. The lawyer was there to advise me, but was not the spokesman for the district. Was that something that was already in your contract that you knew going into that 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 was going that to be one actually, of your roles? That was actually actually. <laughs> uh, they hired me for my, in part because of my negotiating expertise. But they had brought in. They had had a very difficult negotiations. The time prior to my coming in, had hired a consultant to come in and meet with um, all of the Concord unions, and meet with the school committee. Um, meet with myself, meet with the administration, and the advice that that consultant gave them was to establish myself actually as the chief negotiator um, because the feeling was is that I was somebody who wasn't going to go away. Um, but at the same time, I was not the superintendent who was the educational leader of the district, and the feeling was that you needed to preserve that role of the superintendent. So it was kind of putting me in kind of a unique situation. Again, Concord, a little bit unique, and it's kind of hard to describe everything that happened in Concord in 30 seconds or less. Um, there's a lot more involved with that, and that was um, evolved into, a, I would say, somewhat of a non-traditional negotiating process that worked very well. Again, in other places, used a more traditional model where there was a lawyer present who was a spokesperson. I was also present at the table. There was, I think, in virtually every place but Concord, okay, there was usually one to two school committee members present at the table, but never a majority of the committee present at the table. So the committee did not, I wouldn't say the committee ever, and the committee doesn't ever abdicate its role because the committee has to set parameters. When I was negotiating on behalf of the Concord School District with no committee members present, I was always in communication with the school committee because I certainly wasn't going to go to the table and propose something that I thought the school committee was not going to be willing to sign off on. Mm -hmm. um, I guess another question relative to the attorney. Um, you mentioned, Mr. Ely and Mr. O'Leary, that there is always somebody, there is always a, some type of lawyer present from the firm that the school district now uses, or is that? Uh, no. 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 Only upon just, request. Just occasionally. Yeah, yeah only upon request. Yeah. Any other discussion? Are you all Mrs. Donison? Mrs. McLaughlin? Um, through you to Mr. Wigan. Mm -hmm. Mr. Wigan, would this, would, would participating on a panel such as this change your job description? Would that be an issue? Mm. Would that change things? I don't, I don't really think so. I think a lot of business administrators in all states, including Massachusetts, you generally sit at the table in part because I think what we try to, one of the things we try to do, um, folks hear me talk about being the objectifier of fact is one of the things that's really critical in negotiations to have accurate data uh, that both sides can trust. And so one of my roles uh, in any negotiations, whether I was chief negotiator in other districts or whether you know, I serve whatever role it is here in Southbridge, is to provide the data that both sides can look at. So if, whether it's the teachers are proposing, for example, a wage increase based on a particular salary schedule or you are proposing a wage increase based on salary schedule, to use that as an example, I'm the person who, A, should be constructing that, and B, everybody should trust to construct it accurately. So that 
you're working with numbers that everybody can agree is consistent and trustworthy. Is there a motion and a second, or is this something this that could still, be tabled? This it's is still discussion. It is still discussion. We're still discussing the motion and the second, Dr. O'Leary. Uh, th thank you, Madam Chair, through you to uh, Mr. Wigan. So, Mr. Wigan, have you been present with our negotiations until this point? Oh, I have not participated in Southbridge negotiations. That's I a very fair I statement. I haven't even seen them. I haven't seen them. I appreciate that. I've thank seen you. about 100 cents prior, yeah, 100 I, cents prior I, to that. Terry, you, you, got, you understand my point? I do. Yep. Um, so, Help me out with this, anybody. As far as I'm concerned, when we put layer upon layer upon layer of insulation between the parties and the issue, it seems to me to only convolute it. I would rather negotiate personally with somebody. I don't, I don't really feel like I need someone to do it for me. Uh, we talk about people with experience. I don't know how many years Ms. D Dr. Domenico has uh, on negotiations. I know the vice chair has something like nine years. I'm, I'm the, the puppy of the group with five, maybe. Um, I'm not sure how people from somewhere else uh, are going to come in that don't know anything about the, the, the people and the district and the prior negotiations. History is key, as far as I'm concerned, um, to just come in and automatically assume that because there's a degree here or there, uh, that they're going to be a better, better negotiator, going to have better interests in their minds than uh, those people that... Uh, live here or affected here and children's children go to school here we pay our taxes here I, I'm not sure why a panel of uh, professionals would uh, be any better guys Mrs. Donovan. Um, through you to Mr. Wigan again is there a number uh, I don't know if you even have it with you but is there a, a figure or a line a budget line item that discusses the outstanding payments that the district now has relative to legal fees or arbitration costs or issues such as Mrs. Principe is bringing up so that you could look at it as a cost basis we're looking at how much do we owe in arbitration or in settlement fees say as a result or how many existing court cases are out there where people are disputing um, things with the district that number versus what it would cost if we were to have um, an attorney present at negotiations. Um, well, we haven't done the formal year end. There was certainly the cost of um, one arbitration, which is a pretty hard number, that was decided last fall. That was approximately $189,000. Um, as far as how, it, it, and I'm just talking about the cost of the arbitration now. I want to clarify this. And then I want to hopefully correct one, one other point here. Um, there is a, a number of different legal fees related to different arbitrations, but they wouldn't necessarily all be related specifically to something rela regarding negotiations. So we'd really kind of have to ferret that out a little bit um, to really come up with a true number. We couldn't just say that all the legal fees regarding employment would or wouldn't be related to negotiations. But uh, one of the things that I, I was just concerned about, if I can just take this opportunity, Madam Chairperson, when we talk about a panel I, I guess when I've been in, a, again, the more traditional negotiations um, where I'm a member of a team, there's been a lawyer, there's been myself, there have been school committee members. There have not been a whole bunch of people that were brought in from the outside. It's, it's simply that there is a little different makeup of the team at the table. There are still school committee members at the table. You would always have to have that. I absolutely agree with what Member O'Leary is saying. You, you have to have some local representation at the table because absolutely, I think it shows the seriousness of the school committee, okay, that you're at the table when you're negotiating. But there are certain, um, I guess, nuances. And again, this is not really the proper forum to discuss them. But there are certain nuances to negotiations where it may or may not be advantageous to necessarily, you know, particularly have a majority of the committee uh, at the table negotiating. Dr. Mallory. Thank you, uh, Madam Chair, through you to Ms. Donovan. Ms. Donovan, um, I would say the most, the more accurate of, uh, or, or the more telling of the number or the amount, uh, a number of or the amount of money re regarding arbitrations in this district, district 
um, versus what a lawyer would cost, we ought to see what the arbitration numbers are for districts throughout and see how aberrant Southbridge is compared to everybody else would be, to me, the appropriate mm -hmm. uh, way to evaluate that. That seems fair. And uh, yeah. one, one other, reasonable. thank you, I appreciate that. One other component is that there oftentimes, you may not know this, uh, in negotiations, and unfortunately, um, this does happen more than anyone that's fair-minded would like to think. It is often prudent for the school committee to not admit anything uh, in terms of fault or liability or guilt in any way whatsoever. But in order to go forward with an arbitration, it would certainly cost us more to do that when it would to settle. So just having a settlement say, oh, well, that's no. Having a settlement may indeed be saving money, even if it is a spurious uh, case, um, it, it, you know, to, to, to assume that uh, the number of arbitrations that were settled in favor or against, uh, to me, if you've been there, um, it is not how to look at that. And if you want to look at that, not you, if rhetorically somebody wants to look at that, then you're looking at a set of numbers that, that don't really, I mean, they certainly are valid and they certainly mean something. It certainly cost the district. but. Uh, don't read too much into them and read the appropriate things into those numbers, uh, into that information that rhetorically you get. Thank you. Thank you. Ma uh, yes, Mrs. Principe. I just want to clarify myself one additional time. When I spoke about a panel, I was not talking about getting people from, from out there. The two people I mentioned on that panel were two people that are sitting on this dais. One is Mr. Ely and one is Mr. Wiggins, who both have the experience. Those were two people I was talking out about on the panel, and I also mentioned school committee, but not four members of school committee. So just to have that clear, it's not going out to everybody in town, and the attorney, I feel, is important for dealing and negotiating with the teachers' association. Not every other bargaining unit, not the custodians or the maintenance or nurses. I don't think an attorney is needed for all of that. Just to make myself clear. Thank you. Thank you. Madam, yeah. Madam Chair, I don't want to overstep my bounds in the very first meeting with two new members, <laughs> but we're coming dangerously close to discussing negotiating strategy, which is something that's more appropriately discussed in executive session. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I would simply advise the committee to think about that, and perhaps you want to postpone this discussion to an executive session where you can maybe talk about it more fully. I understand your trying to decide on this committee, so they, they mix together. But you are starting to come very close to discussing your negotiating Move to strategy. to call the question, please. Okay. So we have a motion. If we're moving, we just continue on, right? Okay. So we have a motion and a second. Um, end of discussion, motion and second. Let's have a roll call vote on collective bargaining subcommittee. Mrs. McLaughlin? No. Dr. O'Leary? As it stands, the original, as it stands right Collective now, yes. Bargain. Yes. Mrs. Principe? No. Mrs. Woodruff? No. Dr. Domenico? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? No. Four yes, or two yes, four no. Thank you. So we don't have a collective bargaining subcommittee. The next. The next item, item three, is budget facilities and transportation. Do we have a motion? So moved. Thank second. you. Second. A motion by Dr. Domingo, second by Mrs. Donovan. Any discussion on budget facilities and transportation? No discussion. Can we have a roll call vote, please? Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domingo? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Six yes. Thank you. All in favor? Um, the next number four is curriculum subcommittee. Do we have a motion for curriculum? I make a motion that we keep curriculum as a subcommittee. And we have a motion. Do we have a second? I second the motion. All right. We have a motion from Mrs. Donovan, a second from Mrs. McLaughlin. Roll call. Any discussion? Sorry. Any discussion on that? Uh, Mrs. Principe? Here I go again. Um, this is a subcommittee um, that I've actually never been in favor of. And years ago we didn't have it, and years before that we did have it. And 
One of the reasons I'm not in favor of it is because I really don't know a lot about curriculum, and I think most of us sitting here don't know too much about curriculum. I think we need to rely on the experts, the educators, the administrators, the curriculum directors. I've noticed um, when we do vote anything that's relative to curriculum, it's always been a budget item. It's always come under finance. Whether we're doing a curriculum revision and it's a science revision and they need microscopes or textbooks or, or whatever. The same with mathematics, social studies. To me, it's always been a budget issue. Um, I noticed in the past year when David DiGregorio chaired curriculum, there weren't too many meetings called. And what was unfortunate is that he never had a quorum when he did call a meeting. I think there are things that need to be discussed. Um, I think the last meeting he had where there wasn't a quorum was um, creationism and, mm -hmm. and versus evolution or, ad, or adding that. Um, I think that a discussion did take place. Mm -hmm. I don't think anything came out of that discussion. Um, Mr. Ely, you were there, correct? Yeah, we actually ended up with a quorum at that meeting. You did. That was, I think, maybe the first one we did. What that committee did that was probably most impactful for the district since I've been here is, is that was the committee that we did this district reorganization of the elementary schools under. Mm -hmm. I, as, as we were talking, as you're talking tonight, I'm reflecting back on that committee. It probably would have been better off under the communications, family, and community engagement committee, subcommittee that you're talking about tonight. But we had to stick it under a committee and we decided curriculum was right. going to be the most impacted. So uh, I, 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 I've never been a place where you have a curriculum subcommittee. It was new when I came here. Uh, the, the, the question about creationism uh, in, in the science curriculum versus the philosophy or, or something or social studies. Uh, it's an interesting conversation I think we should continue. I'm just not sure what forum it should continue under, but it could continue under the community engagement piece as well, because I think that's a big community issue. Well, I agree too, and I, I don't see any reason why we couldn't at any time have an ad hoc committee, um, assign, assign an ad hoc committee to discuss just something like this, or the committee of a whole. I just, like I said, everything that we mostly had anything to do with the curriculum in the 12 years or 11 years that I've been on was always budgetary. Um, that's it. Thank you. Any other discussion? Dr. Domenico? Madam Chair, again, another, another item that um, is described in Massachusetts general laws is the responsibility of the school committee. Every new subject area, every new uh, subject proposed at any level has to be formally approved by the school committee, unless school committee has discussed it and will again go upon advice of, I don't know, community, larger panel, board, whatever you want. Uh, I believe again that we are coming very close to, um, you know, relinquishing something that belongs mm -hmm. into shaping a school district. Oh, this stars. board. Great is here to shape this school district as a whole through policy, through collective bargaining, through budgetary responsibility, and through content. And I don't know what we are going to have left in terms of our regulatory responsibility to maintain the status that we should have as a regulatory body in the town of Southridge. Thank you. Mrs. Donovan, did you have your hand up? Yes. Um, I was just listening to both um, Mary, uh, this is Mary Ellen, Pay and, and uh, Dr. Domenico, and I kind of feel like I'm in the middle of both of them. Um, I think that Mrs. Principe, her first statement was that, you know, we don't know anything about curriculum, and how come we don't know anything about curriculum? Um, we have a director of curriculum. We have a director of that does the ELA. I know Mrs. Ryan is director of ELA. Uh, Tammy Perot was director of our math curriculum. Based on the, the, the formality that we're still an underperforming district, that we still have a lot of achievement gaps in, in math and in other um, academic areas, I think that the more that we can do to understand what 
curriculum is being taught in our classrooms. I know the Massachusetts framework is coming online with a whole new set of guidelines and initiatives. I think it's crucial that school committee members are aware of what those guidelines are to make sure that the directors or that Mr. Ely can oversee the directors of that of the of his curriculum team to make sure that those initiatives are being fulfilled correctly. Um, and of course the parents. We're the ones that have our kids in these classrooms. If we're the ones taking the MCAS test or our children are the ones taking the MCAS test and if our district as a whole is being graded on an AYP or an annual yearly progress then I think it's crucial that we all know what is the curriculum, what are the expectations, how do we work as a group up here, how do we work with our curriculum team, how do we work with our parents, how do we work with our teachers, they're the ones in the classroom trying to relay all this curriculum stuff. Um, I don't think that we can just fall short of it and just let it go. I think we're all here because our focus needs to be on education. And if our focus is on education, curriculum is the number one statute that we should be looking at. So I fully maintain that the curriculum subcommittee remain on board. Thank you. This is Prince Bay. Okay. Thank you. And, and then, yeah. Kara, I agree 100% with what you said. What we have done in the past is, is all the changes in, in Massachusetts curriculum and the frameworks and all of those very large items are always presented to the committee of a whole. This never goes to a subcommittee. That's why we have, you know, the, the, the very large meetings where we have the, the head of curriculum, the director, and the math, the math, the head of the math curriculum and, and um, English language arts, etc. I, in by no means, don't think we should have anything to do with curriculum. I just noticed in all the years we have curriculum subcommittee, that's never been a part of it. It's always been mostly. No meetings, actually. So, um, if you want to keep it, that's you know that's fine with me. I just Mrs. McLaughlin. Thank you. Thank you. It um, needs to be active. If we do have it, it needs oh, to sorry. be. Sorry. Well, that would be my point. I think if we have had a committee in the past and it hasn't been as active as it should be, that that needs to be uh, looked at. I am in favor of retaining the curriculum subcommittee for the reasons uh, Mrs. Donovan spoke and. Um, because I think it, again, is a big priority and what the state oh, is yes. looking at and watching us. And if we can amp up our game here and operate on a higher level with everything that we do this year, we'll be in good stead. So I, I would support uh, maintaining this committee. Any more discussion? Anyone else? All right, we have a motion and a second for the curriculum subcommittee. Can we have a roll call, please, Max? Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domenko? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Six yes. All right, everything unanimous. So we do have a curriculum subcommittee. Next agenda is acceptance of Robert's rules of order. So do I have a motion? Motion from Dr. Domenko. Do I have a second from Dr. O'Leary? Any discussion on Robert's rules? Are the new members provided a copy of these? Yes. No. <laughs> yes, you'll get one. <laughs> you'll get some. And All there's right. the big copy and the little copy. Okay. Yeah. I'll take the little copy, please. <laughs> All right, let's have a roll call vote on that, Max, please. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domenko? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Six yes. All in favor of Robert's rules. Um, our next agenda is adjournment. Second. Second. Motion and a second. All in favor? Thank you. Adjourned from this meeting and we'll have our next meeting coming up. In 10 minutes. In ten minutes. So we'll have a 10-minute recess till our next meeting.
those ready? Oh, yeah. He had two. Six weeks ago. Are you ready? Ready, ready, ready. Six Everybody's ready. Good evening and welcome to the Southbridge School Committee meeting on Ju Tuesday, July 3rd, 2012. First on the agenda, Pledge of Allegiance. Please stand. I'm getting there. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, Uh, next on the agenda is public input. Is there any public wishing to speak this evening? Any public wishing to speak this evening? One last time, anybody from the public? Thank you. We'll move on to the meeting being called to order. Roll call. Roll call, please. Dr. Domenko? Present. Mrs. Donovan? Present. Mr. Lazo? Excused. 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 Mrs. McLaughlin? Present. Dr. O'Leary? Present. Mrs. Principe? Present. Mrs. Woodruff? Present. Six present, one excused. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the consent items for warrant number 46 in the amount of $137,676.63. So moved. Motion. We have a second? Second. Second. All those. What was the call on that one? Um, could we have Mr. Wiggins please explain what that warrant would be? Just to explain for our new members, um, every week, typically speaking, there's at least one warrant. Sometimes there are multiple warrants that need to be signed. And actually, at your next meeting, we're going to, you have to set a subcommittee annually that's going to sign the warrants um, and send out, uh, set aside one member who's going to sign the payroll warrants or two types of warrants. Um, what the consent agenda is, is a place where we put typically the warrants that have been signed so that you can simply vote these with a voice vote. If for some reason there is a desire to pull these off, now these are warrants that have already been signed, that your subcommittee has signed, they can always be pulled off and discussed under new business. But if there is no member that wants to pull them off, you can simply uh, approve the consent agenda and anything that is under the consent agenda with a simple voice vote. Without discussion. Without discussion. I just have a quick question. When you said our, that the subcommittee has already signed, do you mean the budget subcommittee? Who? Well, this, this past um, spring, when we implemented a new process, um, the committee chose to have the budget subcommittee sign that. Okay. Um, some school districts do that. Uh, some school districts decide to determine that members who are local will comprise the committee that signs the warrant. So there are different ways to do it. Okay. Um, it's simply a decision that will need to be made at the next meeting as to who the members will be that will compose the group that will, there'll be three members who will be primary designated, whether it's the Budget and Finance Subcommittee, whether it's three other members who will be primarily designated to sign these warrants, okay, um, which are the expenditure warrants, one member to sign the payroll warrants, um, and then there's an alternate to sign each of those. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. <clears throat> All right. Do we need a roll call or just? Just a voice vote Just is all you need. Okay. So we'll get a vote, roll call vote on that. Mm -hmm. All, I'm number sorry. Item five, the consent warrant number 46, right? Mm-hmm. For warrant number 46 in the amount of $137,676.63. I can't hear you. I'm well, they can hear you on TV. The TV's working fine. We're having trouble with the there. internal PA yeah. system. Yeah. Yeah. Roll, call. roll call. Dr. Domingo? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Six yes. Next agenda is approval of the minutes. We don't have uh, any minutes. We didn't receive any minutes in uh, our packets? So no, you didn't because the minutes didn't get there this morning, so they weren't available for the packet. They'll be available at the next meeting. All right, so. Can you table that? What do we do? There's nothing to we table. Just wait. All yeah. right, so we'll, we'll do those approval of minutes at the next meeting. The next agenda are reports. Are we have no reports? reports this evening. No reports this evening. The next will be presentations. We have no presentations this evening. Thank you, no presentations. The next will be the report of the superintendent. 
I've got a report on that. Okay. So, uh, first of all, uh, at the next meeting, you're going to meet our new director of English language learners, our ELL, uh, Dr. Sarah Jordan, or Sarah Jordan, actually. Uh, uh, she's been working with us, actually, as an intern for the last year, uh, getting her administrative degree. Uh, and uh, we, we did, she did a nice job, went through the, the, the interview process with <coughs> about 12 applicants, and she was a su successful candidate. <coughs> So she is actually running the summer school for us uh, anyway, um, for our ELL students at the old high school. So uh, Dr. Jordan will be here at the next meeting to be presented to you uh, so you can meet her. Uh, she's just not available this evening. Uh, we have a, a number of other administrative positions that we are in the process, of, in some stage, of, of, of replacing. As you may or may not know, our director of uh, special education uh, Director of Field Personnel Services, Mike Meyer, is retiring in November. So we've started that search process uh, to have some transition time so he works with the person coming in. Uh, we are in the process of screening applicants at this time. Uh, we have, I think we're, we have eight or nine applicants that we felt had the qualifications and we're just rating them right now before we do the interview process. Uh, and this is actually our second round of that. We weren't happy with the first pool of candidates that we had. Uh, our Director of uh, Curriculum Instruction Assessment, Jeff Zangi, as you know, has uh, resigned and accepted another position in Tantasqua as Assistant Superintendent. We congratulate him, uh, but we will be uh, uh, actually posting his job soon. We have not posted it yet. We're updating the job description and getting it ready to put, put out. Uh, the Assistant Principal position at uh, the middle school, middle high school, uh, the middle school portion, uh, we posted. We have 94 applicants. They went through a screening process, an interview process, sent me two candidates, uh, neither one of which I found acceptable. So we have, uh, we're going back through and doing another interview process for that. Uh, the West Street School principal, uh, Mr. Uh, Riley, has accepted a position as, an, as a principal in Worcester. Uh, he is with us through the end of the month of July, will be leaving us in the beginning of August. We have advertised that position and are in the process of screening for application, uh, applicants for that position. Uh, we will be interviewing uh, that position at the superintendent's level with, uh, with administrators from the district and then sending two or three candidates, whatever we feel appropriate, down to the school building level where we'll have two committees. One committee will be comprised of any staff member who wants to be part of the process because I had a lot of staff members who wanted to be, I couldn't put everybody on. I just said, we'll, we'll do it this way. We'll, we'll send the candidates down to them, and they'll have feedback forms where they can come back and send their feedback and, and, and their comments back to the, 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 the superintendent's level. Uh, and then we'll send, uh, have another committee that night, and we're targeting about the 17th or 18th of July. We'll get something out once we decide on the date to have a parent open. open. So we'll have that night, we'll have maybe two candidates in the building meeting with the different groups, and then they'll switch. So the parents also have the input uh, into the selection process. And then we'll go to a step three, and the step three will include, uh, I'll, I'll be talking to Mrs. Woodruff about appointing a couple people from the school committee to meet with the candidates as a, a third round sort of interview at the superintendent's level with cabinet members and a couple school co committee members uh, before we make the final selection. And my goal is to have all of that done by the beginning of August. The, pro the probably the one that we're going to struggle with the most at this point is the director of curriculum instruction and assessment because I'm simply not ready to put that out yet. So that's where we are. Thank you. Next agenda, agenda item number 10, is report of the business manager. No real formal report. I would just say that year end is going well, um, and um, the um, final stages of the building project are the final stages of the building project, and those are the two things that basically consume my days and sometimes my nights. Thank you. Um, next agenda number um, 11, school committee actions. A, move that the Southbridge School Committee approve the changes in central office staff base salaries and titles as proposed by the school business manager. Do I have a motion? There's a motion. Is there a second? Thank you. There's a second. Any discussion? Any discussion at all? All right, I guess we'll go and have a roll call vote on that, please, Max. Dr. O'Leary? No. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domingo? No. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. 
Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Four yes, two no. Motion passes. Thank you. Item number 12, unfinished business. Is there any unfinished business from anyone? Dr. Domenico? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, I would like to take this opportunity to, take, uh, to thank uh, Jack, Jack Joven for serving on, on this committee for the many, many years. I think he has definitely left a um, quite large footprint uh, in who we are today, where we have been, and how far we have come. Uh, I, wish, I wish him all the best. It was indeed a pleasure serving with a true gentleman at all times. I wish him, I wish him the best. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else on finished business? I echo the same thing, Tanya. I also would like to thank Mr. Jovan for his service to the school district and the students of Southridge. He uh, helped me as my main drive transition and, and uh, you know, just uh, I think he did a great job. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. At this time, I'd like to change the agenda and move into executive session agenda number 15. A, vote to go into executive session to one, discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining for union and non-union personnel or litigation to the extent that an open meeting may have a detrimental effect on the bargaining of litigation position of the governmental body pursuant to chapter 30A, section 21, part three. Roll call. Have a Roll motion. call. Oh, I have a motion. Sorry, motion. Move. Second. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Discussion. We have a, any discussion? Yes, Dr. Domingo. Is there a reason for this change? Um, yes, we do need to discuss. It's negotiation. Negotiation. We are not done with regular agenda. I'm asking if there's a reason for moving. This yes, item. because we need to discuss. We need to come back to regular meeting to vote on what we discuss in the ah. negotiations. Thank you. You're welcome. Roll call, please. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domingo? Yes. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Six yes. Thank you, and vote to um, conclude executive session and return to open session for new business. Thank you. Agenda of new business, agenda item number 13, new business. Uh, anything for new business? Mrs. Principe? Um, I would like to add an agenda item under 13, new business. Um, so that would be an amendment to add an agenda item. Okay. So we would vote on that first. All right. The agenda item is to extend Mr. Ely's contract for two years. All righty. We have a motion to amend the agenda to add an agenda item number 13 to extend Mr. Ely's contract. Second. We have a second. Any discussion? Just a quick question. Just, um, yes, Mrs. Is Diamond. it two separate votes? One is the vote to the amendment. The amendment. One, the amendment yes, and then another and then vote. Another. Okay, okay. correct. All right, thank you. So we're voting the amendment. Yes. All right, roll call vote, please. 
Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? Yes. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domenico? Yes. Six yes. Okay, so the amendment went through and now we need a motion for the extension of the superintendent's contract. So moved. We have a motion second. and a second. Any discussion? If there's no discussion, we'll have a roll call vote, please, on the extension of the superintendent's contract. Mrs. McLaughlin? Yes. Dr. O'Leary? No. Mrs. Principe? Yes. Mrs. Woodruff? Yes. Dr. Domingo? No. Mrs. Donovan? Yes. Four yes, two no. Motion passes to extend the superintendent's contract. Next agenda would be the adjournment of the meeting. Is there a motion to adjourn? So motion, second. All in favor? Thank you very much. Um, Kara, I'm, I'm just going to need your email. Mrs. McLaughlin.